Yeah, last uh, lecture we have seen a basic introduction to uh, feedback systems and how uh, a system can be modeled in multiple ways. And we have concluded that ordinary differential equations are uh, one of the best ways to model uh, a large class of systems. So, from now onwards, we will be uh, restricting ourselves to ODEs, uh, that to specific type of ODEs, and we will go through some of those uh, in this lecture to see what different types are there. And uh, and then uh, linear uh, models are a special case, a simpler special case, and we can actually say a lot about uh, linear models. Uh, we will look at both scalar equations as well as vector equations. And uh, uh, there's a technique called state space transformation. We will go through that. As part of that, is, uh, uh, we will take a uh, concept called matrix exponential. And uh, we will end this uh, lecture on uh, linear time varying models and most of the uh, concepts uh, related to nonlinear uh, systems will come in later lectures. Uh, and in fact, next one or two lectures, we will go through some very fundamental aspects of ODEs to understand what uh, various aspects of ODEs and behavior of uh, solutions to ODEs and so on and so forth. So, uh, we will first broadly classify at, you know, our ODEs into four different types and this is not the only way to do it. I chose to do these things because this is a, a one way of looking at it, a simple way of looking at it. So, the first class of systems are uh, uh, what we call as linear time invariant models where uh, you, you know, in the scalar case, you have uh, something like x dot is equal to a times x of t, where a is a constant. And the uh, equation in front of you could be seen as a vector differential equation where x is a uh, vector, a is a matrix, and uh, uh, x is uh, the you know same vec vector of the same size as x dot. So, this is one of the simplest things uh, uh, that one can think of uh, when it comes to uh, uh, you know, uh, vector differential equation. And uh, uh, if you want to make it slightly complicated, but still uh, live in the world of linear systems, then we have this variety called linear time varying models. And as you can see, the difference between time invariant and uh, time varying is A of t becomes, you know, a function of time. And the primary difference between these two is basically linear time invariant models is where we start does not matter. You can fix uh, uh, your so called starting time, zero time anywhere, uh, you know, in the real number axis, so to speak. And uh, whereas, uh, if you have a, li a linear time varying models or any time varying models, uh, the entire behavior depends on where you start and things like that. So, it actually matters whether you started on, you know, uh, 1st of April or 2nd of April. So, of course, the next complexity uh, comes in one direction is nonlinear time invariant models. And most of the uh, course in this uh, uh, series of lectures is going to be on nonlinear time invariant models. And the most complicated of all these class of models are uh, nonlinear time varying modules. The, some of the theories uh, we will see uh, will apply to uh, nonlinear time varying models, but we won't necessarily go through a lot of those details. So, that uh, brings us to uh, the first, uh, you know, detailed uh, look at one of these models is basically this uh, linear time invariant models. And, uh, you know, I am using this terminology without input, uh, without uh, with input and things like that. And mathematicians use autonomous and non-autonomous and, you know, there are various ways of look at, looking at it. Uh, for the time being, just uh, uh, you know, look at the equation x dot equals a times x of t. And uh, for this equation to be valid, we assume that x is uh, uh, at any particular time is uh, basically a n-dimensional vector that obviously makes uh, x dot also the the, the time derivative of uh, that function x of t, x dot of t has to be also n-dimensional vector. And the initial condition has to be an undimensional vector. And of course, for this equation to make sense, A either should be a scalar or uh, can be a matrix uh, of uh, the dimensions n by n, which is what we assume. Uh, so, to uh, understand, uh, uh, you know, how these things work, we probably uh, will have to look at some more special cases. Uh, but let's ask ourselves a question, right? So, we have this differential equation. 
uh, which says that uh, uh, derivative of a given vector is equal to some matrix A times that same vector as a function of time. Uh, and then it has some initial condition. Uh, intuitively speaking, for every first order differential equation, one needs to have one initial condition or one uh, condition where you freeze the value of the uh, uh, vector at that particular time. So, the question therefore is uh, given such an equation, is there uh, x, a function x of t that satisfies that equation? And uh, uh, you know, we asked that question because some uh, equations may not have a function x of t satisfying that. So, uh, so to answer this question, we will uh, basically uh, take a very simple case of what we call as a scalar model where everything is uh, one dimensional. So, x dot equals a x uh, of t and where everything is a real number here x of t, x dot of t, a x of 0, all of them are real numbers. Uh, bear with me, uh, I am saying x evaluated at t is a real number, but x of t is of course a function specifically in order to be able to take a derivative of time x dot. Uh, it should be actually uh, at least differentiable uh, most of the time, right? Um, so we'll get in, get into some of those details uh, later. But for the time being, let's focus on this simple equation. We must have seen uh, these kinds of equations uh, uh, earlier in our education, and uh, what we typically do is uh, write them as differentials. Uh, so if you write them as differentials, basically we can rewrite the differential equation as dx by x is equal to a times dt and all of us know how to integrate this particular uh, kind of uh, equation. So, integrate on both sides uh, on one side on left hand side you go from x0 to x of t and on the left hand side you go from 0 to t. Um, pardon my uh, ambiguity in notation I am using dt as well as the uh, variable as time, uh, but I hope you see what I am trying to do there. So, we get basically uh, after integrating log of x, this is the natural logarithm, log of x of t minus log of x 0 is equal to a times t and simplifying and rearranging we get uh, x of t is equal to e power a t x 0. Now, at this point uh, one can check if this is indeed a, a function that satisfies uh, uh, the equation above. Uh, first check is basically at t equals 0, do we get back x sub 0 and we do. And uh, if we take the derivative, uh, uh, first derivative of time with respect to time, do we get back x dot equals a x t. And uh, you can easily confirm that to yourself that uh, indeed this particular x of t is equal to e power a t times x 0 satisfies the differential equation. We will uh, slowly see we call such uh, uh, functions that satisfy these uh, uh, equations we call them solutions and uh, um, so uh, you know uh, um, there is another way of uh, looking at the same equation um, uh, you know this is just a different method uh, I want to present simply because I want to show that uh, 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 the second method that I am showing about to show you can be extended to uh, vector differential equations. Anyway, I say something like uh, if uh, uh, you have a function e power a t to start with, we we are very well aware that e power a t is always positive uh, for every t for that matter, but uh, definitely for all t greater than or equal to 0. So, I am going to basically uh, have this positive uh, number. Uh, if I have an equation, I can multiply on both sides of uh, the equation and it does not make, make any uh, difference. So, uh, uh, so I am multiplying the inverse of that because this is a, a positive number. So, we can invert it which is which happens to be power minus a t. And uh, uh, what do we get from all this? Well, the next step is basically why we did all these things. If we observe closely, um, so if we observe closely uh, e power minus a t times x dot of t. Uh, minus a e power a minus t times x t can be thought of as actually uh, uh, d by d t of this uh, composite function e power minus a t times x of t. And of course, the left hand side uh, right hand side is 0. So, uh, what this means is uh, derivative of some function is 0. So, we actually 
know uh, from our basic uh, uh, fundamental theorem of uh, calculus that e power a t times x of t has to be a constant and we know the value at uh, t equals 0 from which we can actually evaluate for x of t. So, the other way of looking at it is basically integrating that equation, we will exactly end up with the same result as before. I mean, obviously, it is not surprising that if we use a different method, uh, we still arrive at the same uh, uh, function. But the point is, uh, whatever the method we uh, use, we do have a solution to this scalar ordinary differential equation, which happens to be linear time invariant. And the most fundamental question that uh, most of the time we ask ourselves is, if there is an answer to a question, are there multiple answers? In this particular case, are there any other functions satisfying the same ODE? It is a very important question because once we uh, know the answer to that, we can um, claim many things. right? So, what we have here is x dot is equal to a x, right? I am uh, dropping the dependence on uh, t here just for simplicity. We do know that x of 0 is given by x sub 0. We know one solution, I do not know, let us call that y of t is given by e power a t times x 0. The question is, any other solution. Okay? Like I said, any function that satisfies this particular uh, equation is called a solution and we are asking the question, are there any other solutions? So, let us assume that there is any other, uh, some other solution. So, assume z of t also satisfies uh, the ODE. So, what I am going to do is a trick here. I am going to define some function p of t as z of t times e power minus a t. Okay? Do not ask why, this is just a trick that we are doing. Uh, and I am going to take the derivative of this particular function p with respect to time. So, uh, then of course, z dot of t times e raised to minus a t minus a times z of t e raised to minus a t. Right? So, remember uh, we say that z satisfies the ODE. So, z dot is therefore is equal to a times z of t and uh, uh, times the product e raised to minus a t minus a times z of t e raised to minus a t which was there before resulting basically phi dot is equal to 0 identically right, for all t. And of course, we know uh, for a fact that uh, phi dot of t is 0 identically then phi of t is going to be constant and that constant can be uh, anything specifically I am going to say phi of t is equal to phi of 0. Right? I mean there is nothing contradictory there, they are constant so therefore they are equal to one another. But we know that phi of 0, which is uh, uh, essentially uh, z of 0 times e power minus a times 0, which is z of 0. But z of 0, we know that it is nothing but x 0, because it satisfies the differential equation as well as the initial condition. So, therefore, z of t is equal to e raised to a t times x 0, which of course is identical to the original uh, solution y of t. So, this tells us that um, even if we assume that there is some other uh, possibility of uh, uh, solving this problem using some other function, then we showed essentially that uh, that that solution is going to be the same thing. right? So, that uh, uh, we use a word basically uh, for this particular system, there is a unique solution. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, there is no possibility of some other solution. So, uh, if we go forward and look at basically uh, a slightly more uh, uh, advanced version of the same problem, x dot equals a x plus b u and this is called non-autonomous system or uh, uh, depending on how uh, 
you see it, uh, this can be thought of as basically scalar uh, models with inputs, right? Uh, the language of input and output is more uh, the language of control systems uh, community. Uh, um, some uh, uh, general assumptions have to be made, uh, otherwise uh, uh, a lot of these things do not even make any sense. Uh, so here we assume u of t is integrable with respect to time and again we will use this trick of basically multiplying and uh, uh, you know rearranging this particular equation with e power minus a t and we have uh, discussed enough that basically e power a t is positive so we can do that except earlier we had uh, the right hand side to be zero in this particular case we have uh, e raised to minus a t times b of u but otherwise the procedure remains the same so we can actually uh, rewrite the entire equation ODE now becomes d by dt of e power a t minus um, times x of t is equal to this right hand side function uh, earlier which was 0. So earlier it was fairly straightforward uh, uh, because uh, the right hand side was 0. Uh, now uh, you know things get a little bit more complex and uh, uh, you know if you go through the uh, same uh, integration you get the log and rearranging all those terms we end up uh, essentially with this nice uh, equation that shows something like x of t is equal to e power a t times x 0 plus 0 to t e raised to a times t minus tau b times u of tau d tau. Now this equation is so useful in uh, uh, you know so many different uh, applications uh, one actually you know it's beneficial to practically remember this and uh, the uh, the integral actually has a very nice name uh, um, it's a convolution between two functions, uh, but we don't use the terminology much in this particular course. So I don't want to go too many into details, but uh, X of T has two components. One, something to do with the initial condition effect. And then the second one is something to do with the external input effect. Uh, if any initial condition happens to be zero, only the external input uh, uh, is effective and vice versa. So this is uh, kind of the summary of uh, uh, scalar systems, scalar linear time invariant uh, models with and without input. And here we essentially solve the entire problem and we can actually uh, uh, study this particular function that we have in front of us x of t uh, e power a t x 0 plus integral of that uh, uh, function over there uh, by just analyzing. Right. One of the simplest things that we can think of is if a happens to be negative number, then the effect of x0 kind of die downs, dies down as t tends to infinity. That's obvious, e raised to uh, a t, where if a is negative, then it goes to 0. Uh, whereas the second one will actually uh, not necessarily, depending on how u is, uh, you know, the behavior of uh, x of t uh, is determined. And in fact, most of the time we tend to assume x of 0 is 0 because uh, the effect of initial condition dies down relatively fast and u of t depending on whether it's pers persistent or not you know whether some function that keeps having uh, you know, going up and down and things like that uh, essentially the solution to any system with inputs will be driven primarily by the input um, in the classical control systems we see that as uh, uh, essentially uh, Laplace transforms assuming uh, the initial condition is 0. So the next question that we should ask ourselves uh, is uh, we have seen scalar uh, first order systems, first order equations. What about higher order differential equation? Right? So I will uh, 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 take a pause here and uh, go through uh, examples of higher order systems and then get back to the main part of the lecture.